YouTube, it's Catherine Michelle. Just a quick update um, from the Philippines this morning. Um, this might be of interest to um, people who know uh, U.S. veterans who are living over there. The VA clinic is closed as of this morning. There, um, and as we all know that the um, the medical services from each country, uh, from what I, I shouldn't say what we all know, from what I have heard, um, other countries, if there's an American citizen there, if you don't have access to um, your own medical um, facilities or whatever, <clears throat> that they may kind of have to be put on the back burner to locals. Now, I don't know if that's true or not, but this is of some concern to the veterans, the, U the U.S. veterans who are living right now in, in um, uh, what do they call that, Metro Manila, Luzon, I think. I, I get it confused as to which island is what, but I do know that um, in Metro Manila, the VA clinic is closed, so our U.S. veterans cannot get any medical care at all everything shut down they not for regular stuff not for anything that would have to do with um, COVID-19 nothing so they kind of been left in the lurch and it gets better being snarky and sarcastic with that one um, it was announced that Americans if they choose to leave as of yesterday they had 72 hours to get to the airport after the 72 hours are up, that's it. They're they're locking down and no Americans will be able to leave at all. So they'll be stuck there. Now, here's where the frustration from some of the veterans are coming in over there. Um, they've shut down all transportation. You can't take a taxi, an Uber, nothing. And unless you know someone who has their own personal vehicle, they're stuck there. Um, and unfortunately, a lot of people there use the local transportation to get around everywhere. So a lot of people don't have their own car. So the VA clinic is shut down. Our guys are left without, guys and gals, are left without transportation even to the airport. If they wanted to leave, they can't get there. Um, so that is it's it's kind of frustrating the the thought process right now is um some of these veterans are saying you know they feel like they've been abandoned by their own government which is the united states they kind of they just shut the doors without really any advanced warning to get an email yesterday have the door shut today a lot of them couldn't get in and get any kind of an appointment or medication it, they were just left and are left in the lurch which I don't think is very cool. Not of our government to do at all. At all. Not right now. This is this is just it's inexcusable. Um, someone had asked about churches and what they said um, is that two days before the mandatory shutting of all places where people, large groups of people gather, which includes restaurants, churches, everything. Um, so yes, that includes churches. They are no longer, um, they're under like the mandatory shutdown. But they did want people to know that two days before that happened, the Catholic churches had already stopped their gatherings and um, put out a notice and said, hey, we don't feel this is safe. So I say kudos to their Catholic churches who did that two days before the mandatory closing. But yes, as of now, all, church, all churches are suspended, as well as many other places. Um, let's see. What else do we have here? Um... I'm sorry, I, I, it's been a crazy morning. I had to go out and, and get some stuff done today. So I'm like, ah, I'm trying to hurry up and get this done. Um, oh, and also it's important to note that um, the people I talked to over there in the Philippines, they said that another main thing that makes it really difficult for any veterans who may even wish to get out but can't get out is that a lot of these, if they're... Um, 
an American U.S. veteran and they are on any type of disability and they're getting a disability pay, they only get paid once a month. So um, people who live paycheck to paycheck understand that when you get paid, you know, your money's gone before it hits your bank. So to have they get paid once a month, transportation shut down. They Most people they know don't have vehicles. The airport is going to shut down to ship them home in less than probably about 36 hours now. It was yesterday morning and it's in the middle of the night now there. Um, yeah, it's about one o'clock. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. They're 12 hours ahead of, of um, mountain time here. So anyway, they're they just have very limited time, no resources, no money, and the clinics have been shut down. So they have no way to get home, no way to get their medications, and absolutely no medical care. And um, a lot of people over there, a lot of um, our citizens, well, the people that I'm talking to, uh, they're really huge Trump supporters. So I told them, I said, now's about the time where you better start you know, sending your emails to the president and letting them know that this is not okay. And they're like, well, President Trump probably doesn't know. I told them, I, uh, yeah, no, the president knows. None of this stuff goes by, none of this goes on without the leader of our country knowing this. So hopefully they'll start sending letters because now they're going to be stuck in a country with no medical care. So I'm hoping that the president, if these guys start, guys and gals, start writing that the president will at least demand that the VA clinic opens back up again so that at least our U.S. veterans can get at least their medications, you know, and get treated for whatever, you know, they normally get treated for because a large portion, what the people, the person I spoke with today said that the large portion of the U.S. veterans there are of the of older, they're, they're older people. So they need their medications. They, they need access to medical care and to shut that down. Wow. Let me make sure I don't have anything else real quick. Oh, and they said that they have a curfew now from 8 p.m. to 5 a.m. Nobody can leave. They have police and military that is enforcing curfew. Um, they said so far it's been really good. The people have been abiding by what they're supposed to. And I read them an article from The Guardian, where, um, which is, I don't know if they're just an online newspaper or whatever, but The Guardian makes it sound like they have this, <laughs> things are really bad over there and citizens are stranded and they can't get where they need to go. Because I'm reading them this headline and they're like, uh, no, 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 no. They said, that's not it at all. So whoever reported that in The Guardian had it all wrong. They said that, um, what they're seeing with these large groups of so-called stranded people is that they're not stranded. They're all just waiting their turn to be able to get a ride because they've limited the number of people who can ride on. I couldn't understand the word they're saying, but for lack of a better word, a trolley, a car, a, a converted Jeep, something like that. But only six per vehicle now. Whereas before they could put a whole lot more and the wait wasn't as long. So they said, no, nobody's stranded over there. They're doing just fine. And um, most of the people are handling this so far really well. There hasn't been panic buying there. Um, people are listening to what their president has to say um, and abiding by curfews. And I, <laughs> I'm just sitting there thinking to myself, why can't we in America do stuff like that? <laughs> we are supposed to be such an advanced uh, country, but yet people have shown themselves to be Neanderthals in this event. Total Neanderthals. Man, y'all set humanity back a long, long way. Um, okay, and I think that's about it for that right now. Um, yeah, so if you guys feel like you want to do something or if you have something on your heart where you, you want, well, I, if you feel an urging to do something to help somewhere, writing the White House, writing the president and asking them or 
you know, asking politely, I don't think demanding is a good thing to do, but ask them to please reopen the VA clinic there in Metro Manila because, you know, our guys and gals need that, you know, because they're going to be left with nothing. And most of them, it's really hard pressed to get medical care, you know, through the local hospitals there anyway, because their hospitals are not what we think of hospitals here. It is a whole different situation. So I start sending off emails if you, if, if you would and to help out our, our U.S. veterans. Um, now, um, I had to make a run today for my own medications. And um, <laughs> in the process, I stopped at... Um, I went to, to get my meds and then I stopped at Walmart and, um, yeah, that's, I only went to Walmart other than my, so never mind. Oh, I did stop and get a drink from come and go. I love iced tea. So I got an iced tea from come and go. Um, but, at, um, Walmart, I just stopped just to get an idea of what's going on because some of the Walmarts, um, people have been contacting me and they're out of just about everything, you know, is grocery wise. They were just about out of everything. So I said, okay, what, how are the local Walmarts here doing? So I just picked one at random, stopped in. And, um, you know, when I first walked in, I had really high hopes. It's like, yes, there was a good selection of fresh vegetables, which was really good. Um, bakery items, they had plenty of that, plenty of fresh vegetables, plenty of fresh fruit. Um, and they did have a good selection and still a good stock of frozen goods, which was good. Good to see. And as you're going down the aisles, you get to the, first you come upon the soup aisle <laughs> and it's like virtually wiped out. There were a few cans here and there of, of soup, but I would say, um, yeah, the vast majority was gone. Um, pasta. Again, same situation. The majority of the pasta is gone. I, w I think I saw maybe, maybe 15 packages of pasta. And that was just a, 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 of everything, whatever brand they had that was, and some of it was like, you know, stacked on top of something else. So <laughs> not much pasta left. And then the canned good aisles. They did still have some canned fruit, not a lot but canned vegetables were all, all but completely gone. And so I'm like giggling as I'm walking through the store. I'm like, oh my goodness. You know, I love fresh fruit, fresh fruit and, and veggies anyway. So I was like, yay, they have my food. <laughs> I know that's very selfish, but it was like, okay. So I'm just, again, going down the aisles just because I'm curious. And then I said, no, no, no. My next stop has to be the toilet paper aisle. <laughs> and it is gone. I mean, I mean, nothing, no Kleenex, no toilet paper, no paper towels, nothing. <laughs> and then the cleaning products gone. They did have some laundry detergent, which was good. So for all those who can't wipe their backsides with toilet paper because it's gone, there's at least laundry soap. You can, you can wash your clothes. Um, and then my next stop was the eggs and milk section. Eggs, gone. Milk, they had some, a little bit here, a little bit there, but not a lot at all. And then from there, I went to the cheese and then the meat, the packaged meat aisles, like processed meats. And um, processed meats, gone. Cheese, they had a, a very minimal selection, but at least they had a little bit of cheese. Cereal, they had plenty of cereal. They had um, candy, believe it or not, <laughs> they had candy. Um, uh, what else did they have? A lot of the other sections were doing pretty good. I didn't check on rice and beans. I, I forgot when I was there. But um, but yeah, it's, um, I, you can see where, where they're struggling to get the inventory back on the shelves and hopefully it's coming in. I don't know I didn't ask but it's like wow but on a good note there were not a whole lot of people at Walmart and those that were there 
were very cordial, very nice. Everybody was calm, moving about. And the people that I did see shopping, because I just walked around, um, were only putting in the cart the things that you could tell they were buying that they needed. You know, they had like minimum things when they went to go say, um, not that this is what they were saying, but say they went to go pick up some cheese. They took one package of cheese. And then they went and took one loaf of bread. Oh, bread was okay. You know, so far okay from what I could see. Um, so I found that encouraging. That I thought was really, really good. So that's the update today. And when and if I hear something else, we'll let you guys know. Have a great day.